Australian interest rates were cut to an historic low of 1.25% last Tuesday. The reasoning behind this unprecedented move was to stimulate a clearly faltering domestic economy. However, with cuts, there are always losers. And the biggest losers are, of course, savers. According to a report by financial comparison website Finder, about $526 billion is currently held in savings accounts across Australia. This means that savers will potentially lose about $1.3 billion in interest payments over the course of a year if banks pass on the full 25 basis point cut. Graham Cook, Insights Manager at Finder, spoke of the upcoming cuts. He said, If more lenders pass on the cut, it's likely to hurt Aussies that have worked hard to put away a large amount of savings, such as those saving for their first home, or retirees relying on their savings as a form of income. It's crucial to check how your savings account stacks up. Even a marginally better rate could pocket you more money in the long run. AMP, Suncorp and ING have already passed on the cut. It's only a matter of time till other banks follow suit. The Australian Financial Review noted that 80% of Australian savers face a negative interest rate. That is, their savings rate is below the headline rate of inflation. Their money is literally losing value. Of course, the RBA don't want you to save. They want you to spend or get into more debt. Mr Cook spoke of some options for savers. He said, In the current situation, it's going to be difficult to make decent interest on your savings unless you're willing to take on a little bit of risk and look for higher risk, higher return options. But obviously in an economy where the cash rate is falling, the share market might not be that attractive an option either. It's kind of a rock and a hard place situation for people trying to build up interest at the moment. And investing in property isn't even necessarily as safe as it used to be. Based on recent headlines, we can see there's a pattern in Australian monetary policy, with the RBA flagging another rate cut in the upcoming months, APRA planning to relax lending restrictions to help some borrowers access a mortgage, and with the new Morrison government planning to let first home buyers purchase property with only a 5% deposit, we can see that the key goal of the current establishment is to get Australians up to their eyeballs in debt. Debt good, savings bad. Graham Cook reckons that thanks to all these measures, property might be a good place to invest your money. He said, Together they could potentially have an impact on the housing market, which could encourage investment, push prices up and counteract declining price patterns. That could very well be the place to invest your funds. So it's watch this space when it comes to house prices. Personally, I wouldn't bother with property, but certainly you can't just leave your money in the bank eroding away as inflation kicks in. But despite the intention of the Reserve Bank's rate cut, consumers are simply not buying it. If the RBA's plan was to try to get people to spend, then they may have already failed. According to the latest Westpac Melbourne Institute survey, where consumer sentiment is measured, the combined index read was 106.8 before the recent rate cut. Any value over 100 indicates optimism, while values below indicate pessimism. After the most recent survey, senior economist at Westpac, Matthew Hassan, said, Responses over the survey week show a marked drop-off after the Reserve Bank's official rate cut. Those collected after had a combined read of 95.5, with daily results showing a further softening after the week GDP report. This is a disappointing result given the cut in official interest rates this month and suggests deepening concerns about the economy have outweighed the initial boost from lower rates. So could it be that Australians on average are just not going to fall into this massive debt trap that the powers that be are trying to push us into? Should we be concerned that our financial regulators seem to have no other way to stimulate a faltering economy except by incentivising debt? What are your thoughts? Is Australia screwed?